hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at memory upgrades for NAS and today we are looking at the DS1621XS Plus and we're going to be looking at unofficial memory upgrades for it. Now for those that aren't aware Synology are pretty strict on these things they will only really support their system if you use their memory their own branded memory modules for upgrades. This device the DS1621XS Plus arrived with the Ryzen sorry not Ryzen I should say the Xeon quad core processor there 2.2 gigahertz the d1527 and it also arrives with 8 gig of ddr4 ecc memory it's a 10g bolt it's built for business and it has a lot going for it but it has to be said that memory if you upgrade it to 32 gig you can really make the most of this system now the official memory modules that are out there it's a single stick of 8 gig inside there Synology do provide to, uh, 16 gig modules that allow you to upgrade this officially to 32 gig but there are other memory modules out there but by using them you are going to be utilizing an unsupported configuration as far as Synology are concerned and if something goes wrong unfortunately that means they're not going to be able to support your warranty that's their wording so Today we're going to be looking at unofficial memory upgrades because in spite of all of the talk of support, it should be said that a number of you will look at the price of Synology memory, the availability of Synology memory, and then look at brands like Crucial or like Kingston and then just think, do you know what? I'm going to go for some of that. I'm going to take a risk and that's up to you. But just understand that you may be making your warranty unsupported by doing this. Now in today's video, we are utilizing the 1621XS Plus. We are going to be taking the official memory out, the eight gig of memory that's inside here. And then we're going to be installing first two 16 gig crucial memory modules. These are Sodium DDR4 non ECC memory at 2,666 megahertz. And then we're going to boot this device up, check if the system has recognized our unofficial memory, and then we're going to uh, run two virtual machines inside, assign 12 gig of memory to each of them, and then from there, we're going to see if those VMs are able to identify the unofficial memory that we've put inside. Then, if that's successful, we're going to go ahead power the device down remove that memory and then we're going to install some kingston memory now this kingston memory is 32 gig modules dual rank and that means with two of these inside we will be installing 64 gigabytes of memory inside this synology with those other modules now synology are pretty steadfast that this system does not support more than 32 gig of memory internally in those two ports if you go to the Intel Xeon official specification page for this NAS, you will find that the CPU uh, is listed as supporting up to 128 gigabytes of memory inside. The result is that uh, perhaps it's because they utilize more simultaneous lanes, and this has only got two slots as you can see inside there, or it's the idea that Synology doesn't have a 32 gig um, module for this system relying on that ECC memory making sure that you can't upgrade outside of ECC so there's lots of different things that could be but nonetheless once we've installed that Kingston memory later on we're going to go ahead run those two VMs again assign a lot more memory more than likely around 24 gig of memory per VM and then we're going to see how the system adapts now once again if you go into the description below you're going to find links to the memory modules we're utilizing today they're all available there and throughout the course of the video I've got some tabs open here on the laptop that we're going to be utilizing to show you the memory modules uh, and the model IDs and stuff like that but do remember if you do look at memory upgrades and if you are going to go down the road of using um, unofficial memory in your Synology NAS do make sure Firstly, try to use dual rank memory. The majority of systems do a lot better with dual rank memory as it separates the total memory capacity over more um, chips on that PCB. And secondly, if you are looking at upgrading the memory on your system with unofficial memory, once again, I know I'm banging a drum and it know it seems like I'm being super paranoid, but make sure you've got your backups in place. Make sure off-site, on-site, cloud, USB, make sure your data is safe because you are going to be running uh, an unsupported configuration on your Synology. But nonetheless, we've got the crucial memory inside. Let's get this connected up and make our way onto the graphical user interface to see if it recognizes our memory. 
Right, so here we are on the 1621 XS's uh, DSM GUI here. We've logged into the device. I've already had a quick look. Uh, didn't want the package center there. I've had a look into the control panel and I can see straight away the 32 gig of crucial memory has been recognized. And on top of that, it's worth highlighting the resource monitor has also noticed it as well. Don't worry too much about the graphical stuff here. I have raised that in previous videos, but that has happened with Synology's own memory as well. I should also highlight I am using OBS as always. So the consequence is that um, during the course of this video, there may be the odd little graphical hiccup, uh, but that's mainly OBS trying to keep up with a lot of graphically intensive stuff here on screen. But as I say, uh, we've got a couple of VMs on this device already set up. So if we go into the Virtual Machine Manager, we can go ahead and boot those VMs. Got two VMs there. I've assigned a couple of gig to each of them and a single CPU core. So in order to you know take advantage of this memory, what we're going to do is go ahead and ramp that memory up. We're going to ramp it up to 12 gig of memory. And again, we can go all the way down to full if we like, but of course... We do want to leave some memory for the system to run on. So we're going to go with 12 gig of memory with a single Xeon core with each of these VMs. And that should allow us to see whether the system will allow us to occupy those memory modules. And again, this is very short term. This isn't a long term test. But for now, we can have a look. We've got them both set up. 12 gig, single core. 12 gig, single core. Both of these I should highlight are Windows 10 VMs and I have already set these up in advance. So we're gonna let that prepare, get to power on. Next one, we're gonna power on that second VM there and leave them both to power on a little in the background. And again, we can connect to them, but of course what we're gonna see right now is the standard VM VNC access there for both of these VMs running. You're gonna see the ramping there at the bottom. If we go ahead and open the resource monitor as well, just leave that there on the screen. We can go in and open the second VM as well connect to that so now we've got the first vm there running second vm getting close to boot and while it's doing all that when we get to the desktop of each of them we can have a look and learn a little bit more about memory in the cpu while they boot up in the background see as mentioned this d1527 does support officially more memory if we scroll on down it can support up to 128 gig but it's worth remembering, of course, the 128 gig, chances are you are talking about using UDIM memory, you're talking about using more slots. So it's worth remembering that there is every possibility that the reason the Synology has a maximum of 32 gig could be anything to do with the available lanes on that processor all the way down to the number of slots that are being occupied across the channels. Um, again, as mentioned, we're using the 16 gig module here, the Crucial, available on Amazon. There should be a link in the description or a link towards the NAS Compare article. And of course, later on, we'll be looking at the Kingston memory, which is a little harder to come by. But whether you go to Amazon or not, you can always go to like, Kingston's own website where they have it listed there. And there's lots of information about the memory, you know, it being dual rank. Once again, hugely important, the dual rank bit there. Uh, but again, non-ECC memory, so no error code correction, but still 2,666 megahertz. So we'll see if that memory works. So don't go out and rush and buy it yet. So if we go along, we can go into each of these VMs. Let's log into them here. Again, I know you're quite close to the keyboard there, so I apologize for the beeping and bumping there in the background. I should add that I probably shut down these VMs a little unsafely, so I think that second VM there is probably suffering because of it. Sorry for the break in recording there, guys. It really doesn't help when you forget the absolutely awful password that Windows sets by default. For those that aren't aware, the password is capital P A S S W zero R D exclamation point. Don't get me wrong, I understand why you want to make a default password, but my god, that one's a mess. Anyway, so while that second VM logs in there, we can go into the second one. Again, we are using a Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation copy of Windows, so it is a little bit resource hungry. If we have a look here, we can see that memory has been occupied pretty much all the way. We can see that the, the VM, the host there, both of them, as they boot, they're utilizing and occupying that memory that we've assigned. If we have a look here on the back end, we can see that 80% of the memory has been occupied by the VMs in real time, both of those VM images. If we go into both of them, we can open up the task manager on both of them. Let's go ahead, open up the task manager on that one as well. Again, this is booting. It's not booting from an SSD. Bear in mind, so we're using a single core CPU here 
and we're utilizing on mechanical hard drives. I think two hard drives inside this system in a RAID 1 environment. So again, this is definitely an OS that should have been running from SSDs. We're not looking for performance here overall. We just want to see that that memory is being recognized on both of them. We've got the 12 gig there. We've got the 12 gig being monitored and utilized there. So as you can see, the memory has been accessible from the VM. We can see there at this 32 gig module form. So from here, it's going to be very interesting. If we power down these VMs safely, so we'll leave those two there. We can see, I think the proof is in the pudding there. We can go ahead and shut these individual VMs down. And then from there, we're going to power down the entire Synology NAS. And then we're going to install our more aggressive 64 gig Kingston memory setup on the DS1621XS. So we're going to leave that shutting down there in the background. As this does that, you're going to see the memory being utilized here suddenly drop. We can see one of them has already been uh, powered down. And boom, you can see the memory slowly disappearing all the way down. And now it's going uh, back to being accessible by the core Synology system. So for now, we're going to go down and shut the system down. And what I'm going to do now is install the Kingston memory. Don't worry, I'm not going to have to make you watch that. I'll get the Kingston memory installed. I'm going to boot this device up. I'm going to show you, one, if the system boots with this much larger than uh, officially supported memory at 64 gig. And then if it does boot up, whether we can get both of these VMs to occupy a good 20, maybe even 25 gigabytes of memory each. But for now, let's fast forward to the installation of that Kingston memory. And so the moment of truth, let's log back into the device. Legitimately, I have not logged into this till now. So let's have a look. We've still got all the tabs open from earlier. We went to 1% memory utilization there. So the next thing we want to do, head into the control panel. Do you know what? I've been in such a rush. Double check. Yep, we're still screen recording there. Next, we're going to the info center and boom, we can see 64 gig of memory. Of course, that isn't totally it. We want to make sure that we can also utilize that memory. Having it visible is not the same as uh, being able to utilize it. So there we go, we've got 64 gig of memory showing there. So next thing we wanna do is open up Virtual Machine Manager. We've still got the tabs from earlier and we'll reconnect to the VMs in just a moment. Let's get Virtual Machine Manager up there. And again, we've got 12 gigs, so this time, let's get a little greedy. So what do we think? We previously had um, 24 gig of memory being utilized, and we left 8 for the system. So utilizing that logic again, if we go to 48 between the two, we'll give each of them 24 gigabytes of memory. I'm not even entirely certain whether these versions of Windows are going to be able to see that, but we'll give each of these 24 gig of memory. I know a number of you watching this video will be wondering why oh why am I not ramping up to 32 gig each or at least 30 gig and it's simply because I want to make sure the system still continues to run adequately and that means of reserving resources for virtual machine manager as well but for now we're going to leave that at 24 gig each so both of them have got 24 gigs so we'll go for them each of them there 24 gig 24 gig and between that, that means 48 gig of memory has been utilized by these two VMs. So let's go ahead and power them on. Give them both a moment to power on. It's preparing. I'll wait till it says powered. And then after that, power on the second one. So once again, um, again, I know I already mentioned it previously, but these are the memory modules that we are utilizing. In previous videos, people have critiqued me for not highlighting the memory modules enough. I should also highlight while these two VMs boot. And this is really, really important. Um, when I do put, and this is, doesn't even just count to me, this counts to lots of other websites as well. Anyone that links to any of these websites, and again, that includes third-party websites, these manufacturers will change and refresh their ranges quite a lot. And although there will be a link right now to this memory module, manufacturers do change their specs, as do websites as well. And often, the link and the, uh, the memory module you're being linked towards will actually change. The, the URL won't change, but the content of the URL will change. So do double check when clicking any link that the page you're going to is indeed the very correct memory. But for now, let's go ahead and get these VMs connected. Cool, so they've both booted up. Let's go ahead and log into them with that god-awful password. Let's go into both of them, log them in one by one. You can hear the, the fan on my CPU starting to ramp up there on my laptop, so I apologize if you can hear that in the background. While they both boot up, we can have a look here, and we can see 
that the memory each of them are utilizing there. We can also look as we go ahead into the memory utilization there. We can see straight away it's ramped up quite substantially again by the memory being utilized by both each of the VMs and the memory from Synology's Virtual Machine Manager being utilized in tandem to that. We can also see two of the CPU cores have been occupied as well. We're logging into both of them here. They've both gone in. I've made sure to keep them off the network. We'd, I wanted to make sure that Windows didn't try to update and slow down everything in the background. But for now, let's open up um, the task manager on each of these. Have a little bit of a look. Have a look what we're getting inside the VM. So we can see there, again, the CPU utilization there. We go to performance. As you can see, 24 gig of memory being used by that VM and 24 gig being utilized by that VM. So both of them are registering that 24 gig of memory that we have allocated. And alongside that, the memory monitor has shown it as well. So it does look like the Kingston memory does work on this system. However, and I know I'm banging a drum here on this disclaimer, bear in mind that you are, if going down either of these paths, using an unsupported system. And ultimately, the safety of your data can never be guaranteed by the brand at this point. So please, 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 if you go down this road, make sure you have a great backup strategy in place, off-site, on-site, USB, cloud, use hyper backup use active backup sync use all of those options and make sure your data is backed up in multiple locations thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video do go to the links in the description where there should be links to this memory and the nas compare article which breaks down all of the stuff we've gone through today and alongside that there's lots of other memory modules available to use on your synology nas system otherwise click like if you enjoyed the video click subscribe if you want to learn more and i'll see you next time